Hi there, I'm Maddie from Puzzles Plays and if you've seen my channel then you probably guessed that I like jigsaw puzzles rather a lot. So today I thought I would share with you the methods I find most effective for solving jigsaw puzzles but if you've got any other tips then please do pop them in the comments under the video. I would always just check what size the completed puzzle is going to be so you know it's going to fit on the surface you're going to be working on and that that surface is going to be free long enough for you to use it to complete your puzzle. So before I get my puzzle pieces out I always like to take a good look at the picture, take it in generally a nice cup of tea or coffee and have a look so I can see distinguishing features like in this puzzle the bike and different colours, we've got like the features, the blues, yellows and patterns, sort of the dark and um, slate and brickwork of the roof. So in the next stage when I start sorting the puzzle I already have an idea of what sections I want to sort the puzzle pieces into. Okay without further ado then let's get this puzzle out. So I'm using the Ravensburger puzzle, a little um, street in France. I would recommend pouring the pieces out carefully. It's amazing how they can fly out of the bag and onto the floor and just make sure there's no pieces hiding still in your bag. And now we can see our lovely puzzle pieces. Now you can get special stacking sorting trays for your puzzle pieces, but I often just use the bottom or lid of the uh, puzzle box, shoe box lids, baking trays, Empty chocolate boxes, which if you like me and have a sweet tooth, always plenty of those around. Okay, next we are going to sort the puzzle pieces. Now I know once you've got your pieces out of the box, you just want to get going and put the puzzle together. But sorting the pieces first really will save time in the long run and make the puzzling experience much easier and faster. When sorting my puzzle pieces, I always make piles of the corners and edges, colours and distinct features. Okay, let's get sorting. So I'm just going to pop, make a pile of my edge and corner pieces. And then just move all the others into piles of similar colours making sure they are all facing upwards okay so now we have finished sorting our puzzle pieces into groups we can begin by assembling the border now there is an exception to this rule, uh, if you have a puzzle where the border is all the same colour it might be easier to start on another section first. I find it easiest to put all my puzzle pieces the same way when I put the border together. We have all our border pieces ready now. It's time to start piecing the border together and pick out uh, colours and features that match one another. If you do get to the end and find there's one or two pieces of a border missing, try not to worry too much. They always uh, normally show up later on.
choose a colour pattern or distinct feature that you sorted earlier on to start puzzling together. I tend to avoid colours that are in multiple places at the beginning, such as the roof or the foliage of the green, as this can be a bit tricky. I'm going to start off with the yellow, as it's pretty much just in one section. Let's get our pieces out. Now this is my favourite part. We've done the sorting, we've put the border in place, and it's time to get puzzling. now have the first little section of our puzzle completed. A few pieces left over and I think they belong more over here. So now I can choose another area to start on that I sorted earlier. Possibly the bicycle or the deep peach area here. At this point it feels more like we're completing little puzzles to build up the big puzzle. to look out for where colours meet one another. Here we've got the peach meeting the blue. So we can look through the pieces we have sorted and put to one side all the ones where there's peach and blue. We know it's going to go down here so we can fit them together. If you get stuck Take a break, or try a different perspective and work on your puzzle from another angle. As your puzzle comes together, it can get trickier to find the right piece. You can look for little clues on the puzzle pieces to where they go. This one has a little speck of yellow there and a little bit of white up there. We can see white there, yellow there, and fits in like so. Okay, I've just about reached the end of the main colours that we sorted from the houses and the bicycle. This is a nice straightforward puzzle for a beginner with clear colour sections and designs. The foliage and railings are going to be the trickiest part, so I'll have to pay a bit more attention to changes in the design, detail and colour. If you're ever unsure whether two pieces fit together, check if there's any movement, whether the edges that meet are straight, and if you're still not sure, just flip them over and check if you can see any gaps or light coming through. I don't think those fit together. And try again. That looks better. It's nice and flat along there. And if I flip them over, no gaps, no light. That's better. The pieces fit. Yay! I found my missing border piece hiding amongst all of these. You can also see I've now laid all the remaining pieces out on the table, which makes it much easier to see. And I've also organised them by puzzle piece. What I mean by puzzle piece is a lot of puzzles have different shape pieces in them. Here are the standard puzzle piece shapes. This one is the most common, with two outy bits and two inny bits opposite each other. 
This one also has two outy bits and two inny bits, but they're next to each other. It also has quite a funky shaped corner, which is very useful when trying to find where it fits. This piece has three outy and one inny bit, and this is the opposite with three inny bits and one outy bit. This piece has all inny bits, and the last one has all outy bits. And if you turn it slightly, that shape kind of reminds me of a star. I'll show you now why it can be really helpful to group your puzzle pieces together by their shape. For example, over here, this space has two any bits and two outy bits. So now it's a standard puzzle piece. So instead of looking through all the puzzle pieces, I know it's going to be over here in this section. It's a bit of a window, so it's got some blue. There we go. Again, down here, we can see this missing piece has two outy bits, one any bit, and a mystery. It can't be a standard puzzle piece, because that's not going to fit. Nor a star or all innies. It could be a two out, two in piece. All innies. And one outy won't fit. And finally, it could be three outies and one inny. I can see this one has a little bit of white to match there. And fits like so. But I only needed to have a look at two tiles. This method is really handy if you have a large colour block area as if you can distinguish what type of piece you're looking for, you have less pieces to take in and out and try. I also wanted to talk about areas that appear to have a large section of just one colour, such as the sky, sea, snow and so on, and how to complete them. In this puzzle, the smoke from the train appears to be just one large white area from a glance, but if we take a closer look, we can see there are small amounts of detail within the smoke cloud that we can pick out to match the pieces. I would also recommend having your puzzle pieces sorted by shape. The other important factor here is the colour tone. The white is actually not just a block of one colour. It has darker and lighter shades and part of it has a yellow tint. Your colour perception is really important here and the more puzzles you do, the more it will improve. I hope you find these tips helpful. You can read them on my website too. There's a link in the description just under the video to my site and also some information on the puzzle that I've used today. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for lots more puzzle videos. Until next time, take care and happy puzzling!